going on folks snowing outside but it's still a beautiful day always today we're going to get clinical you know i was talking to a few friends and you know this thing about this workplace game you know it's something that we really need to delve into because you know we can talk about this all day but if we're not going to really think about solutions then the average person's Who's in a right state of mind is going to go to work every single day. Is going to face the bullshit every single day. So clinically, we're going to try to figure out this narcissistic person in this game today. Why do they do what they do? We're going to delve really deep. It's jealousy, folks. I told you that two of the main contributors to all of the evil that we see around us, the covetous behaviors and all of the selfishness and all of that, it comes down to... Jealousy and envy. Yeah. The people that you in your workplaces, you know, your supervisors, your flying monkey co-workers, they're all jealous for some reason. Right? You have qualities, you know, that they wish they had. Right? And on some level, they're so obsessed with you that they, they fall in love with you. It's like a love-hate thing. Right? They love you so much that they hate you. Right? They hate you so much that they love you you know and so really they chase their own tails consciously you know because because it comes down to how they feel about themselves and they loathe you and envy you so badly because you have these qualities or these characteristics that you develop in your lives that make you who you are and they don't have a clue about how to be that way and so they have to pretend a lot they have to do a lot of faking Right? They're very duplicitous. They're severely duplicitous people I discuss. These are those people, folks. They have to continuously do things to hurt you and put pressure on you and make you feel a certain way because, you know, they're feeling like that. And they want to assign that to you. You know? And it's ridiculous. You know, every single day, you know, I had the games played on me. So when I talk to people, I greatly empathize with their situations because I know how it feels, you know, to have that that boss consistently play games with your schedule or play with you at work in certain ways. Have you doing all the work, let all your coworkers hang out and stuff. And they do these things and it, they're not fair because you're just trying to make a paycheck and, you know, come to work for those hours, you know, get paid and go home. And life should be really simple as that, but you, you just find these situations where they're not. It's, a, it's all about that person's mind, though, right? In every way that you see them, how they act and stuff. You know, when I worked in these workplaces, there was this laugh, right? This hideous laugh. And it was almost like the evil villain in the cartoon series, you know, that you would look at. Where they would do this laugh. The laugh was always relative to some game that they were playing or something negative that they were thinking about you because you know you're the target you're tired of being a target but because this person is consistently messed up in their heads consistently then you have to deal with it i always say this folks the trouble with the world is not foolish people it's not crazy people right the trouble is when those crazy people brain that craziness into your personal space and then you have to deal with them and then you have to get confused and go through all of these emotions and stuff unnecessarily right and they're very callous about this game right you know you'll seem to you know not be affected and they'll just keep on trying to apply pressure because they're looking for that place they'll come up to you they'll ask you questions about you know I've had this happen about, you know, people at your job concerned with who you're talking to because they want to control everything. These are, are textbook games, folks, and they play out. These are grown adults, but they play these games. They're like children. You give them a little bit of authority or something, and because they have that childish mind and consciousness, they, it plays out and it affects you. So you'll have that situation at work where, you know, they'll reassign your lunch break because they don't want you eating with a certain person it's just about your happiness if you're happy eating with that person you get along and you don't deal with a lot of the flying monkeys or play the games but you you get along with certain people they'll try to eliminate those people from your your uh personal space at work right as best that they can do it even if it means that you know having you do a job by yourself they'll do these things 
and it'll trouble you because you'll say, what, per what type of person, what type of man, what type of maturity would, would give me this person who who be willing to do this every single day? Because you'll, you'll, you'll figure out after a couple of years that this is not going to stop. And you're going to say, you say, you know, you think about it. How long does this shit last? But it lasts forever, folks, because the person has a psychological problem. Until they get help, until they go clinically go see someone, right, and work on those issues, because it's not going to stop then, they're going to have those issues. And it shows you that we live in a crazy world. If you're a parent raising a child and you're crazy, you're going to affect that child in a way that they're going to disservice the world. This is what I always want you guys to think about yourselves, right? Being the best you can be doesn't matter what they do. When you have the most high in your corner, you'll have the demons come out every day lurking about, looking for games, looking for opportunities to fight or exploit you because they see that good in you. Right. But you're protected. If you're with the most high, you're protected. And everything they do. Right. Draws up a karma for themselves. But they're so ignorant. The ignorance is what keeps these people in these places. You know, but I hear about these things every day. I just heard a story and, you know, and it, it mirrors my own stories. So it makes me realize in this huge world of, of populated you know, people, we have a bunch of people who are sick. Right. Many of you would say that I'm, you know, I'm exaggerating this. But really, you're not really looking at reality. You're one of those people who want to, you know, stick your nose you know, turn your, put your head in the sand is what I'm saying. You're one of those people. You know, stick your nose up someone's butt crack because you're, you're, you're a butt kisser. But you live your life, your life on these terms. And when you meet people who, who are stronger than that because they have that strength, you're so envious. You know, it's a playground thing. It started somewhere, you know, six years old. You had a, someone had a toy better than yours and that just bothers you. But because you had parents who didn't instill good values in you, those things took you over. And now as an adult, people have to deal with you. This is the problem in the world, right? If you could just go to work and get a paycheck, it would be fine. But you continuously have to deal with gossip, slander, flying monkey games because they'll get people to ostracize. And that goes into intelligence as well, right? How can I tell you not to talk to someone and I'm just a shit bag and you can't see me for who I am, see? So I'm manipulating you to keep you away from a good person, right? Because I have a, 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 I'm targeting that person. There's a game I have set in place for that person. And you're going to help me, you know, do a lot of these things if I'm a narcissist at work. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to tune out these narcissists. And when they come up to you and they, you know, try to assign you to a different break schedule or something, you know, you're a grown up. Really, after that, you get off work, you have your life back. Right. So if they're going to do that, just let them do it. Don't get upset about it because you're an adult, you know, but you'll marvel at how many days and how much energy a fool will have to keep playing a game. That's that's just the sickness of it. So you're just going to ignore these people, you know. If they, if they overwork, you just do the job, you know. And while you're at it, be working on that exit plan, looking for something better, greener pastures. You know, because you are the one who's ultimately in charge of everything you do in your life. So you can move forward. Right? And always look to the most high. Grab onto his pants leg. Hold on to him, folks. Because this world is full of devils. Everything that they do. You know, it's snowing out here. And, you know, I'm out in the country, so, you know, just to get out, you know, we had to have people plow and stuff out there to get, you know, just to get around. And, you know, when I got out into the main road, I noticed that, you know, the, the guy in the farm down the road or something had done a plow and pushed all the stuff over the main entrances of, you know, of the property. So, you know, I had to find another exit to get off of my property just just simply because they blocked that main road up. And I'm just trying to show you that that person, you know, when they did it, it was fun to them. They had to be because reasonably, if you're you're uh, plowing, you know what, you know, was blocking you in. You know what's going to block another person in. So if you're going to push everything in front of someone else else's entrance or exit, 
then you're not you're not helping them. You're being an asshole. And this is what people do just for kicks. So you can drive off and laugh to yourself and think that person's going to have to shovel their way out. But then w what happens is because they have the most high, you end up in a ditch somewhere. You see what I'm saying? The karma. A lot of you people do things and you just don't think about how that's going to come back to you. Because you don't believe in the most high. You don't believe in better things and higher things that are good. Right? So you operate in the demoniac nature that you are. You know, and you do these things not realizing that, you know, there's an opposing force that will stop you. Right? So don't think you're getting away with stuff, folks. I really am troubled, though. You know, when I look at these workplaces, you know, a lot of companies go belly up because they lose good workers. You know, the productivity of their company goes down because they're hiring these crazy ass people who literally come to work to play a game. Their life is centered on that. They come to a job. They don't know anyone. They let a fool tell them something. They can't even see because, see, they deal with so many people like this person, this, this narcissist. In their lives, their parents, their family members, they themselves, right? They, 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 they think that that person is credible. Even though that person is a shifty-eyed fool and every moment they're trying to stir up something and they, could, they can't see these things. You know, so better. So the better strategy for a person in a situation like this at work, because I'll make this quick. It's getting cold out here. You know, is to ignore these people. Right. Why would you validate a fool? Right. It's only going to make you more insane, more, more emotional things that you have to deal with in your own minds. You know what they say to you or whatever. So you avoid them. I recommend not having work friends unless they can they meet a certain standard, right? A lot of people would say, go along with your life and just take people as they are. You can until they break into your home. You can until they clean your bank account out. You can until they do something to you, slander you, backstab you, right? Cheat you out of something. And the average person is, is, is totally willing to do this. So in your conscious minds, you can't possibly be a good person if you think you are. If you spend your days and nights plotting out someone else's, you know, demise or something. And then think that you're going to be blessed in your life or something. Your life is going to be short-lived. Your life is going to be terrible and miserable. Maybe many of you are suffering in your own minds. And, and we on the outside because you put on this external, you know, front that you that you, everything's going well we believe that you're doing well and that you're getting away with this stuff but you're not you're suffering you're more and more alone and you're being watched more importantly so don't think you got away with anything just laugh now cry later is what you're going to do okay ignore these people folks i know you're tired of it you know many of you have a I don't know how many years you have left on your jobs, five, ten years or something before you can retire or something. And I, you know, I wish you the best. But for those who have a little money put away or have some other, you know, idea about trying to make some money, try to try to look into that. That's the only way you're going to shut this down, because until you get rid of the toxic workplace environment or the, the toxic bosses or the flying monkeys, you're going to deal with this climate. This is in every workplace, folks. Most of the leadership are going to be narcissists because they, they knew how to kiss up. They knew who to go to to get that job. That person only wanted a certain type of person. So you're going to have a bunch of flying monkey fools around you. You know, here's another thing real quick. You know, your coworkers who, who get a little, you know, reward or something. Maybe they get to be a, you know, an assistant or something. And they take that to their heads and then they're. They're consistently monitoring everything that, you know, that you do, even though you've been there longer than them. Just the things that you have to deal with. Right. I hear this stuff and I, I went through it. But you go through all of this stuff because really it's about the person trying to invalidate you because they feel that you have some strength or some quality that they're really, really, really envious of. Right. And they figure that since they can't have that quality or the person that you're friends with or something, they'll just try to eliminate the dynamic of you being with that person or just eliminate your happiness altogether. This is how they operate. They're crazy. 
Many of you, when you start looking at people for who they actually are and how they're presenting themselves and what they're saying in their actions, because many of you are just, just dingbats in that sense, right? You don't even realize you'll touch that stove over and over again and keep burning your hand because you're crazy. You're thinking something different is going to happen. See, this is how this works. Ignore. You folks go on over to my website, thinkbehavior.info, pick up my book, I Love Bad Behavior, right? You can get that book on Amazon, right? Like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And, you know, you guys take care in this snow, right? Because you're going to have those people who are, who have the big four-wheel drive trucks and they're going to do 85 in the snow and ice and stuff because they think that they, they're bigger than everyone else. You see, more foolishness that you'll have to deal with unnecessarily. Y'all have a good one.